Hey, so in today's video, I'm going to show you a common error that people run into with Next.js and error handling. This is specific to Next.js 14 when you're using server actions. So over here, you'll see that um, a user is doing an action. Um, this is a server action. You can see at the top of the screen, it's got use server. And so when someone wants to create a, an, a group, what they'll do is we'll check if they're logged in, we'll pass the, the content using Zod to get the name and the prompt and we'll check the users logged in and we'll create the group. Now the problem is over here, let's say they're not logged in and they try and do this action. So you might think that this message not logged in is being sent to the client. And so you might try and do something like this. So you'll do a try catch around the action and then you will go and do a toast error, let's say, and over here you'll show the message. So it, you might expect that it shows not logged in as the error and in development it actually will show the message not logged in. The problem is when you go into production, that's not going to work. And Next.js doesn't share this data with the client. It hides it for security reasons. It doesn't want to expose the real error message, but it does expose it in development to supposedly to supposedly make it easier for you to develop so you know what's going on. Problem is this is very misleading because what you test locally and you think works and you run into it in production, it doesn't work. And errors especially are a little bit harder to test in production, so you might not notice these when you're sort of going through the application. So the fix for this is actually not to do something like this, but like this instead. So over here, you can see instead of me throwing an error, I'm just returning an error message. And this message will be returned to the client. If this throws an error, it won't be. So you might want to still handle that however you want to handle it. But this, it will throw the error message to the client. Like over here, if you want to add an error message, um, that can be handled by the client, then you will do something like this. And again, you do return error, error creating, whatever you want to write here, error creating group. Thank you, cursor. Anyway, so then over here, this code, you don't want it to run like this anymore if you're trying to get dynamic message from the error. Instead, you'll want to do this instead. So you'll see here, we're doing create group action. Now we're checking that is it an error type object we're getting back? If it is, then we can use result.error, which is a string. And otherwise we're gonna do toast success and so on. And the exact same code, just instead of try catch, we're using this if else block. Now, what is is action error? So it's some very simple code, but here you'll see uh, is action error. We've got an action error type, which is over here. It's just an error with a string. So we're saying that our server actions are gonna have this type of response. It's either gonna return action error, which looks like this, an error string, undefined or T, which is just sort of well, dynamic basically. Um, using a generic in TypeScript. And over here, we're checking if it's an action error. And how do we know if it's an action error? If the error object, uh, if we've got the error property on the error object. So when we get the result over here, if dot error exists and it's an error, it's a string, we can return it. Otherwise just say, hey, group created. And over here, you can see we've also added server action response. This isn't strictly necessary, but can be helpful So um, just to make it clear that every server action is returning that type of object. You could force someone to actually um, put in T and what the, uh, the type is, and then you'll start to see, okay, X error doesn't exist, but this does exist. So in that way, this uh, TypeScript type can help you. Anyway, I hope that was clear. I hope it helps you. I've run into this issue myself. My users have found it in production. I've also noticed this issue as a user myself on other apps such as WAP, which is like a well-finded team and you know, definitely has a whole bunch of developers working on it. I'm sure we will see this error around a lot on the internet. I've actually opened a discussion for this on Next.js. No real discussion here right now, but anyway, um, it's just so you know what this looks like when you see it in a real app. An error occurred in the server components render. The specific message is emitted, emitted in production builds to avoid leaking sensitive details, blah, blah, blah. So here you can see it in WAP. Here you can see it in Inbox Zero app. And you'll continue, you'll see this error a lot going forward. And yeah, as I mentioned, the main issue is that how things work in production and development are different. In my opinion, development should work in the same way as production. Meaning if you're not going to leak the error in production, don't leak it in development either. And if you are going to leak it, maybe use like a digest object or like have it deep in the error message and don't have it as an error dot message because developers are going to use that thinking they can use that for the error message. And what really bothers me is how badly this is explained even in the documentation. So here you'll see an example of delete invoice. So you throw an error, fail to delete invoice. 
and it's not really made clear that, you know, this isn't going to work for you, that you will think it works in development, but doesn't in production. Anyway, let me know what you think. I hope this helps you better develop your applications too.